Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, from 7TCG, and I just got back from a workout, and uh, I just want you to know, you ain't about that life. Let's go, baby. Let's go. But today, we have our Becoming a Common Theme, doing the set predictions, uh, going for the competitive scene. Obviously, this is not gained on, like, local armories and other stuff. This is for uh, more premier events, and we're just going to get five predictions on what we think will happen. Uh, I'll try to be very specific with most of these. Some of these can't seem pretty broad at first glance, but let's go ahead and get into it. Oh, last thing to keep in mind, these are only from when Dust Atom becomes legal to the next set becomes legal. I don't remember the actual release date for that, but these will play, basically be in effect until the new set releases, right? So number one, Prism and Vincent will not have a single top eight. And all the Prism... People, go ahead and leave. I understand you're upset. I mean, keep in mind, you know, I just brought my prism sleeves. I have three cold foil luminaris. I have multiple cold foil prisms. Uh, I'm also a prism player, but uh, I have came to the reality that, at least at this point in time, she is behind, behind everyone else uh, by a great bit. Uh, both of her strategies have severe downsides, and... Uh, unlike the old prism, old prism could hex into aggro and the aura game plan uh, without any deck building uh, costs, uh, just because how powerful Luminaris was. Uh, but unfortunately, this prism either has to index into heralds or into auras, and both game plans have got a lot of tools to combat against that. So I think as of, as of right now, it is not prism's time to shine, but maybe down in the future, uh, our girl can be our savior. And then when it comes to Vincent, I do think Vincent probably has a much better chance to top eight. The issue with that being, uh, how do you justify playing Vincent over the other Rune Blades? What is Vincent offering that the other Rune Blades don't? And is that thing that Vincent is offering just that much more powerful than what other heroes can offer? So with that being said, no top eights. Now, uh, today is Wednesday. I have a Battle Harden in Battle Harden Cincinnati in a few days. That's going to be the first uh, major event since Dust of Dawn will have came out. And uh, maybe even Set will be there. Um, as of right now, I'm probably taking Katsu. Um, possibly Kano. Possibly... I don't know. But... Vincent, not on my radar when it comes to any of my matchups. It's if I face a Vincent, just just play the game. Uh, next, Lexi will have the most top eights, but not the most wins. Uh, that is something very specific that I think we've seen, kind of like the Briar syndrome of Meta's past, where Briar will have half of the top eight being Briar, uh, but there are some times where Briar just doesn't actually convert. Uh, whether it's like two briars checking each other out in the quarters and the briar losing in semis. and Yeah, we have the top eight destroyed by briar, but not able to get there. And I think Lexi will have not a not the exact same issue. I do think Lexi will still have firm wins. I Honestly, probably second. I wouldn't be surprised if I had the second most amount of wins. Uh, but I do think that... She will not have the most. Now, what hero will have the most? Uh, Dromash creeping up there in player base. I think the Dromash players have gotten better. Uh, you also ha you have underdogs. Like I said, a lot of people are just switching to Bravo. Not enough to make me scared, but you're probably going to have Odin players just say, well, 80, 8 or 90% of my deck was just Bravo, so let's just go this way. I don't think he'll become like the third most represented hero or anything. Like he might slide into that that fourth or fifth represented hero behind like Lexi, Draw My. I think a lot of people should be playing Briar. So Briar would probably be third and then fourth, fifth is kinda of up in the air. Uh next. Kano, and this one's special for me. I think Kano will actually win a battle hard or a calling. I think Kano can do it. Uh, the Kano community has grown a lot recently, kind of just like uh, other communities, like the Dromai community. And there's been a lot of tools and resources out to make our players better. And 
I also do think that a lot of people aren't going to bring Arcane Barrier. Uh, if they do, it won't be much. Uh, because, especially in a new meta, we know what the powerful decks are. It's Lexi, Jerome, et etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, they probably want to index on more slots to fight those heroes now. Yes, Runeblade does have a Thorn. Like, so you might have people bring like AB1 or... Obviously, Runeblades have the new chess piece that just has natural AB2. They might bring that. But I don't think you'll see people bring AB3 plus Oasis. Like, that doesn't seem very logical. Unless they are the people hedging against the people that are hedging against the meta, which then you're just doing something like 17D chess at that point, and you're just the better player at that point if you're able to do 17D chess. Well, I'm just playing backgammon. But uh, maybe maybe I'm the one that wins the Battle Heart in the Calling. Maybe, uh, maybe I just take Kano with me. Maybe I take Kano with me and I win this uh, Battle Heart in Cincinnati. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> Number four. Uh, I do think the Axe Warrior build will become the most common slash popular variant of Warrior. Uh, this being Bolden and Dorinthia. Uh, I actually do think that Dorinthia might actually be a little bit better than Bolton when it comes to it, just because of the end game of being able to swing twice with your weapon better than Bolton's uh, late game with things like Bolt, uh, Beacon of Victory, just being able to like to really get somebody with a very like wide turn, with like a take flight into a swing, into a Beacon of Victory, into something else. Now it's a very specific setup turn. Uh, but obviously, I do think both strategies are fine. Um, I actually don't even think the Axe build is the better way to play either hero. But I think people will be so enthralled with the playstyle that it will become the most common variant. Lastly, Briar will finally L out. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been right every single time when I keep saying Briar's not going to L out, Briar's not going to L out. I was one of the few people that said Briar won LL during RTN season. And everyone's like, oh, surely she has to win. And she came close. She, she was two points off. And I do think there are probably some heavy hitters in this uh, season playing Briar. But specifically, here's this very specific prediction. Briar will LL during the actual Nationals season. Uh, and what I mean by that is like only actual during Nationals competition. But anything around it, like, even if it's during national season, like, Battle Hardens, Callings, uh, Peach Ivan, I don't think Peach, yeah, Peach events don't give anything. But basically, like, events that award LL points, besides actual Nats, Briar will not win any of them. But I do think, especially maybe in the smaller countries, that there might just be a really good Briar player there that can just, like, steamroll everyone. And get her her final two LL points. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys agree with all these predictions, or maybe you guys have some predictions, put them in the comment section down below. Like I said, whenever you guys see me win the calling, uh, calling the Battle Heart in Cincinnati, make sure you guys come back to this video and be like, wow, Isaac predicted that Kano will win a Battle Heart, and it was also him, so good on him. <laughs> like I said, if you guys are just make sure you guys.